For today's calculus problem of the day, we're finding the intervals on which a function is increasing and decreasing. Recall that if a function is increasing, that means that its first derivative is positive. And if a function is decreasing, that means its first derivative is negative. So we need to find the first derivative of the given function. In case it helps clear things up, this does mean that there's some parentheses right here. And we notice that f of x is made up of one function of x multiplied by another function of x. So taking the derivative of this first term is going to require that we use a product rule. The product rule says that to find this derivative, we need to copy down the first term and take a derivative of the second term. Then we need to add and take a derivative of the first term and multiply that by the second term. The derivative of the natural log of x squared starts with the 1 over x squared. But since this is a composite function, we need to multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which is x squared. And that derivative is 2x. So in case you're wondering where this 2x comes from, that is the chain rule. Taking the derivative over here of x squared, that's just 2x. And let's do some cancellations. It looks like the x squared here and here are going to cancel, just leaving us with a 2x. And the second term, it looks like nothing is going to reduce. I think it's going to help us to have this factored, so I'm going to factor a 2x out of each one of these terms. And now that we have f prime of x, we need to ask the question, where is this derivative positive and where is this derivative negative? We can start to answer that question by asking, where is this derivative 0 and where is it undefined. In other words, we're finding the critical points of our function f of x. And first we can recall that a natural log function is undefined when its argument is 0. So our f prime of x is going to be undefined when x equals 0. To find where this derivative is 0, well, we can just set it equal to 0, which splits the problem into two pieces. One factor says that 2x equals 0 or x equals 0. And the other factor says that 1 plus the natural log of x squared equals 0. This might take a second to solve. Let's move the 1 to the right side of the equation by subtracting. I'll make a little bit more room. We can start to isolate x squared by exponentiating both sides. That's going to give us x squared equals e to the negative 1 power. If you're wondering what just happened there, what I did is I raised both sides of this equation to the power on e. On the left side, the e and the natural log cancel. That was the idea, and that just leaves us with an x squared here. And on the right side, we get e to the negative 1 power. Now, getting x by itself means we just take a square root of both sides. Don't forget that we need a plus or a minus when we take a square root of both sides of an equation. And if it helps, you can think of e to the negative 1 power as 1 over e. But either way, we have now found three critical points for our function. Let's draw ourselves a number line, and you can see that the three critical points split up our number line into four distinct regions. Now in each of these four regions, the original function is either going to be always increasing or always decreasing. So what we do is we choose some test points from each one of these four regions. To determine if a function is increasing or decreasing, we need to plug those test points into our first derivative. Plugging x equals negative 1 into our first derivative gives us this. And recalling that the natural log of 1 is 0, we see that this value is negative 2. What's important about that is that it is negative, and that tells us that our original function is decreasing at that test point and is therefore decreasing on the entire interval from negative infinity all the way up to this first critical point, negative square root of 1 over e. We need to do it again with all of our other test points. At our test point x equals negative 0.5, I'm meaning that the value of our first derivative is positive, therefore our function is increasing on that interval. Let's make some room and keep going with this. At x equals 0.5, I'm getting that our first derivative is negative, which means that our function is decreasing on that interval. And one more. Plugging in x equals 1 into our first derivative gives us a positive value, which tells us that our original function is increasing on that interval. So ultimately, what have we learned? Well, we've learned that our function f of x is increasing on two intervals, one from negative square root of 1 over e to 0, and another from the square root of 1 over e to infinity. We've also learned that our function is decreasing on two intervals, one from negative infinity to the negative square root of 1 over e, and the other interval from 0 to the square root of 1 over e. And oh my gosh, that problem turned out to be much longer than I expected. I'm going to zoom out so you can see all of the work that we did on that problem. Feel free to hit pause, rewind, watch this as much as you need to, but I hope that this video helps you out, and I will see you in tomorrow's problem of the day.